Every time I get into building one of these Auburns, particularly the Boattail Speedsters and the Cords, I get into panel fit issues. These cars were about $2,000, you know, give or take a little bit in the marketplace at that time, and the manufacturer simply didn't have the money to invest in great dies to do great panel fit. You know, Cadillac had Fleetwood and Fisher, great panel fit, fantastically built cars. The uh, Lincoln was in the same boat, even with all the custom bodies that they made, uh, they were great. The, the stuff coming out of Murray, which was kind of the quote unquote Lincoln built cars, those things were fantastic compared to these cars. And certainly in the Packard world, other than the early Darrens, they were fantastically fitted cars. I'm sure we run into stuff when people wreck them and stuff like that, but out of the factory they were great cars. These were not. They were not very good. And into the cord world where they had two to three hundred pounds of lead in them, they were pretty bad. These cars were, I'll call them a semi-custom. They did stamp the panels, but there was a lot of hand fitting work and even in the back, the panels don't even match up right. And even the boat in the back, uh, the little tail in the back, I've seen them to the left a little bit and to the right a little bit of all the different ones we've done. So they just didn't have the money to do it. And I come along and I try to stab a balance between perfection, we can make it absolutely perfect, or down here at the what the factory did. Well, people expect somewhere there in between. So I've got to clean some of this stuff up and that's what I did right here. I cleaned this corner up here so that all these panels came together like they should. It was about 30 hours to do both sides. It wasn't a real big chore. Let me show you how I did it. It was actually pretty easy. Well, we got back all of our fenders, splash aprons, sheet metal that was a miscellaneous around this car from the blaster. What had happened is we did a lot of lead work on the LeBaron cord, which was sitting right next to this car. And anywhere anybody touched this with their raw hands, it rusted up. So there's fingerprints everywhere on it. It's just easier to get that blasted off. But when I come back, with all these pieces, I shape the pieces so that everything is as close to what I think it should be as possible. And the guys had already done some of this work, but the splash shaper that goes here, I had to do an hour or two's worth of work to get it much closer to what I think it should be. When I took this thing apart, I did take a note that I had a big hole right here where the, the fender, splash shaper, and body met, and there was a piece missing here, so I went ahead and welded that in. And then I think what I'm gonna do is from about this point on down to here, meet this lead up again, lead this corner. I'm just gonna go ahead and lead this all up now. And then when I get the splash shaper under underneath here, I'll bolt the fender up and take care of this whole situation before I get going any further. I'll do the same thing to the other side, get that all done. And then what I'm gonna do is move on to these doors. Really anybody can do this lead work. All you need is some simple tools. We like some Scotch-Brite and a couple of different configurations and a wire wheel. We use our uh, tinning butter in a liquid paste form and I just use an acid brush to put it on there. And then really all it is is heat control all the way through. We make sure that our panel and our lead is about the same temperature and they'll just melt together. There's really nothing to it. We use a paddle that is a special wood, a real fine grain, and then we use a tallow on the paddle, and we keep that tallow on there, and it will uh, keep the paddle from sticking to the lead. They make paddles in a lot of different configurations, flat, curved, and all of that, and eventually I end up with one or two that are my favorite, and I've been using this lead paddle for 20 years plus. When you get done with the lead work, the panel is going to heat up quite significantly and you really need to keep that thing cool, otherwise it'll expand. And here are the few of the files that, that I use. I use a bullnose file right here and what I'm using on this panel is a bullnose file. I also have flat files both in a solid file and a type of file that you can change the curve to either convex or concave and that's real handy in a lot of situations. In the old timers, they used to have all these files in different sizes. It was great, uh, but mine all wore out and I've not been able to replace them. See how easy this is? Put your plastic filler away, pick up a lead stick, a torch, and uh, try it. It's not hard. The trick to leading is, is having your metal tin properly, 
which to get it tinned properly, it's got to be perfectly clean. And then once you tin it, make sure that all that acid is back off. I use, um, I use rags, some guys use a steel wool. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of applying the, the tinning compound and getting it back off of there. Just make sure you get it back off. The reason why we don't lead pits, we can't get 100% of that uh, tinning compound back out of there. If you don't, you trap it underneath there and eventually it'll come out. Usually in a couple of years with some nice bubbles in the paint. So just make sure that's really clean. And then the trick, as I say, is heat control. Make sure your lead stick and your and your metal is about the same temperature. Well, it's within 25 degrees or so. That lead stick will melt right in there and it's really easy. There's a lot of sources for lead out there. Uh, there's a source or two for small quantities of lead. Uh, we buy our lead by the 100 pounds, which is... Uh, we, we like the half pound sticks is what I was using here. So 200 sticks at a time. If you want to buy it in big quantities, feel free to send me an email. I'll let you know where we buy ours. Also the tinning compound, you can buy small quantities uh, from several different sources, uh, but we buy ours by the case and I can let you know the manufacturer of that, of that tinning compound. If you're buying in large quantities, you save about 50% on buying it directly from the manufacturer. So um, there it is. I like to file it. Uh, it does two things. One is, it's just nice, uh, big, chunky particles that fall to the ground. I don't have to wear a mask and all that stuff. The second reason is, is that with the uh, filing, is that I know I'm getting it straight. If you grind it, you don't know whether you're getting it straight or not. So we might as well just go ahead and file it. The other reason why we do that is because if anything comes off of your paper in the way of that sand and 36 grit paper, you know how it is, if it comes off, it buries itself down in the lead and contaminates the lead. It's a bad idea. So we, uh, we like to file it. Right now, this panel is roughed in. It's good enough for me to go to the next step, which is install the splash paper, get the fender on there, and find out about my whole situation. Well here it is, that bronze strip there will get chrome plated and then I've got the corner all tidied up. I'll do the bottom side of the body when I get it all back apart and I can roll the body upside down on the rotisserie. Same thing goes for the back side here. Of course I've got the side all tied into the fender and when we put the fender welting in there it'll look fantastic. Now it's just on to the other side.